Thank y'all so much for coming out to Unplug. I'm gonna slip. I'm good now. I'm all right. Who's their very first time at Unplugged this evening? Very first time ever. Let's give it up for our first time guests. Thank y'all so much for coming out. We're gonna get right into it, but for those who are brand new to the Unplug uh, way of doing things, right now we're launching our first course, um, the Why Am I Here course. Um, but let me greet the people that's watching on Periscope. Thank y'all so much for watching. Go ahead and share on Twitter. Let everybody know you're watching Unplugged Live on Periscope. Uh, thank you guys so much. And for those who's in the room, we integrate social media with our discussions. So if you hear anything that resonates with you, definitely utilize the hashtag, why am I here? Is that my godparents in the building? I'm about to tear up, man. Let's give it up for my godparents. <laughs> thank y'all for coming out. So get on Twitter, get on Facebook, get on social media. Go ahead and get on there. Utilize the hashtag, why am I here? The courses are extremely important. The reason why Unplug is going the course route is because I want to be able to provide you guys with tools and resources that will help you develop your own spiritual walk. A lot of us, a lot of people in our world don't quite understand the importance of disciplines. And so my responsibility is to make sure you guys are equipped with the tools and the resources that you need so that when you go out there in the real world or you go out there in your daily lives, you'll have those spiritual disciplines intact into your life. So welcome to the course. Um, if you want to walk with us through this course for the next 16 weeks, definitely register online at whyamiherecourse.org. Let's get right into it. The scripture that I'm going to start off with for our course is Psalms 139. I'm going to read the whole chapter. So if you have your Bibles, open it up to Psalms 139. I'm going to read the whole chapter. <clears throat> so thank you guys again for coming out this evening, man. I appreciate it. And let's give it up for Project 658 for hosting Unplugged. Eric is the one representing them. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see him. He's the man over there behind the sound table. So thank you guys so much for hosting this. The scripture says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand Upon me, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is the light with you. For you formed my inward parts. I love these, verse two, these two verses here. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. That's powerful. When as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O Lord. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with thee. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God, O men of blood. Depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a the complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in a way everlasting. Let's pray. Father God. We thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity and time that you've given me to be able to come back with Unplugged, to, to empty myself of, of what you have departed in me. And I pray, Lord, as I speak, I speak as a man um, indwelled by your precious spirit, speaking words of clarity, <clears throat> that the words that I speak will land heavy on the hearts of these men and women in this room, that they'll be able to embark on a journey with you so deep and so rich, God, that they'll never leave you. I come against any type of distractions, God, any type of demonic entities that may try to come against this moment. Lord, we already have authority over them. We sanctify this place for your use, and we thank Lord for this moment. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's get right into it. A few months ago, I was wondering to God, where are you taking me? There was moments in these last four months where I was like, you know what, God, will I ever be here again? Here is such a powerful word. 
Sometimes many of us get so caught up on where and we get so caught up on there that we forget about here, but you fail to realize you can't spell neither without here. Many people get so caught up on where they came from or the there that they want to be that they lost the sight of what it means to manage here. Each and every person in this room has a purpose. If you look at your thumbprint, you're the only one that ever existed. With that thumbprint, if you, if, you, if you look at your life, God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. What does that mean? When he says that you're fearfully made, he says you was made with such reverence. That when he made you, he thought about you, he formed you. And a lot of people get so caught about the where they came from. Well, Josh, you I know, mean, I was brought up in a single parent home. Or Josh, I was brought up in a home that was abusive. Or I was molested or raped when I was a child. Or I went through all these various things. But we fail to realize that God knows where he plants you. And it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where you've been. God knows every step because he said the steps of a good person are ordered by him. Do not waver because of where. Some people get so caught up on there, a place they've never been. Many people get so caught up on their past and their future that they forget to unwrap the present. Have you unwrapped this moment? Because this moment you will never get again. This moment you will never be able to breathe this air again. You will not be able to see these people. You probably see them again, but you will not be able to embrace this moment. And the last or the hardest question or the one question that most people haven't found an answer to is why am I here? Why are you here? It's so sad that we'll consult our own agendas, we'll consult other people on where we should go, but we fail to consult the creator and say, God, why do you have me here? We take for granted this moment as if tomorrow's promised. We breathe this air like there's a, like there's a, a valley, an ocean gas full of, of opportunities ahead of us as if we don't take this moment seriously. Are you here now? What are those thoughts that's weighing on your mind? What are those things that's, that's keeping you from progressing? What are those things that's keeping you from in, engaging with your creator? He said, you are wonderfully made. You were made with such wonder. If you look at yourself right now, you are very unique. You are very special. And it doesn't matter how you may view yourself in the mirror or how you may view yourself in life. God said, I fearfully and I wonderfully made you for I formed you in your mother's womb. He said, I knew you. God knows us, but my question to you, do you know him? Why am I here? Man, I used to ask God that question all the time. Let me tell you my story. My mom was in the hospital room about to have me. It was about December 30th, she told me. And my dad's Nigerian, so he's going to give me some long African name. But my mom said, uh, an angel came in a the room. Then, you know, my mom could be spooky sometimes, but I really believe an angel came in a room and told her, don't call him that African name. Call him Joshua, for he'll be a great leader. My mom was about to have me, but the umbilical cord was around my neck, so I was supposed to die in the womb, but I made it. It was about four years old. My mom said I was sitting in the living room looking at her across the room while she was smoking. And at that moment, she said that look on my face was so pressing that she stopped smoking that day and went to church that Sunday and got saved. And ever, from moment, ever since that moment, I've been walking with God. Now, it hasn't been easy. Let's fast forward a little bit. <clears throat> Elementary school. Everyone told me that this boy was called to be a preacher, but I was like, man, I had a stuttering problem. If you listen to some of my videos often, you can catch me stuttering at times. You can catch I trip over my words. But even like Moses, God said, who made your lips? But let's keep going forward. In elementary, I went through a lot of things, man. Growing up in a single-parent home wasn't easy for my father divorced my mom at the age of four. He only married my mom for American citizenship. So you can imagine the abandonment that I felt even at four. Growing up as a young man, not knowing what manhood was, I went through various trials and temptations and, and various situations that kind of made me feel uneasy in life. I can imagine when I went to Cramerton Christian Academy in Cramerton, North Carolina. It was a predominantly white school, so you can imagine a young brother from Wilkinson Boulevard that grew up in a single-parent home, brought up in a situation, and it was such beautiful experience that I went through that, that I didn't experience a lot of racism. I actually experienced a lot of love. Some of my greatest friends, some of the people that I cherish to this moment, I remember a lot of families, the Reed family, the Sawyer family, the Barker family used to bring me into their house when they used to play ball. And I used to ask God, why am I even here? Why can I not go into public school? But God had a plan even then. In high school, let's fast forward a little bit, I was in Victor Christian Center, a predominantly black school. And I was already a misfit, so for coming from a predominantly white school, you know, I had a little sharper grammar or whatnot. I'm not saying that against them, but what I was saying, well, I, fed, I came into a world where I didn't really understand in rap. I didn't really understand all these different variations of that culture, but it was a very unique experience for me nonetheless. Next is college. I went to Oral Roberts University, one of the top diverse schools in the country. 
my experiences there was very fast, and I used to ask God, why did you place me in Cramonton? and why did you place me in Victory, and why did you leave me to ORU? I remember my spiritual mom. When I was sitting in her living room, she confirmed and said that God told you to go to ORU, and she said, you better not apply for no other school. And your boy listened. But it was very fearful because I said, I'm on, if I'm only applying to one school, what if they don't accept me? But God's plan, no matter where he leads you, always going to be accepted. Went to ORU. Met some of my greatest friends. It was May 1st, 2008. Had a concert there. Five to 600 people attended. We bust in over 150 some kids in Tulsa's north side. These kids came from situations where many of us can't even imagine. Tulsa's number two in gang violence and uh, Tulsa's number two in child, other issues like that. So you can imagine having this experience of sitting on a stage like I am now, asking God, how did I get here? October 30th, I know the stories get long, but bear with me, I'm going somewhere with it. October 30th, I had my second concert. Four to 500 people showed up. Everything was going well until the next few weeks after I was stripped. I couldn't even get back into school. I lost my job, lost my apartment, lost the woman that I was supposed to marry. I lost everything, got stripped out of Tulsa, back into my mama's house. And I said, God, how did I get here again? Went to Africa with my dad, February 2010. Flew to Africa, and my, my, my dad and my relationship was mended together. And when I was in Africa, man, I mean, I was going through all kinds of warfare. I mean, my ceiling fan was spinning so fast, my light would flicker. You know, I used to see people that my aunts and other people couldn't see. When I got off the plane for the first time, you could almost imagine the warfare pressure on me that God said, you weren't even going to leave until February. I tried to go to Africa that August the year before. But I used to ask God, man, why did you keep progressing or pushing back where I wanted to be? And then I ended up in Africa anyway. But God spoke to me in my hotel room, and he said, I want you to start a Bible study in Charlotte, North Carolina. I said, all right, I'll do it. Give me a building, I'll make it happen. The next night, my aunt knocks on the door. She says, Josh, you got to leave tomorrow. There's a kidnapping hit on you. If you don't leave by 4.30 in the morning, you may not be able to go to America again. Now, you can imagine how scared your boy was. My mama was all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. All I wanted to do was be in her arms, but she was too far away. I was in a whole other country. Now, mind you, 200 miles up north, they beheaded hundreds of Christians. And I'm in a country right now where I just preached the gospel on Good Friday, and now I'm looking at a place where, man, how am I going to get here? There was no Walmart. There was no place to run. I pushed that dresser right in front of the door. <laughs> I said, God, you do what you do in the spiritual, I'm going to do what I got to do in the natural. So I pushed that dresser right in front of that door. But in the midst of my greatest pressure, I felt a unique peace. Next day, got in the car, flew to Lagos, flew to Charlotte, started the Bible study six months later. I tell you my story to tell you this. Ever since 2010, life has not been easy. People have came in and out of my life. People have abandoned me. People have talked about me. I've seen more valleys and I have seen mountaintops. I went through various trials, almost committed suicide twice in my life. And I used to wrestle with God, why am I even here, God? Why is this walk so hard? Why is it so tough for someone who, who prays to you often? Why is it so tough? And God said, I give my toughest battles to my toughest soldiers. And he told me, if you want to be great, you got to go through great trials. So when you and other people go through tough things, I can say, I've been there before. So we got to get to a place where we go from I've been here before to I've been there before. Because when you've been here before, maybe you'd be like that person, those people that went around the mountain for 40 years. And you're saying, God, don't you get sick and tired of being in the same place over and over again? Do you get sick and tired of going to that same sin, going to that same person? Do you get so tired of going to everything and anyone else but the one who created you? And so I speak with passion to let you know, do not give up. That you're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. He said, he fearfully made you, young woman. He fearfully made you. He said, I made you with such reverence that when I took my time with you, Ashley, I said, I know exactly how I want her eyes to look. I know exactly what kind of height she's going to be. I know she's going to go through that breakup there. I know, I ain't saying you broke up with nobody. I'm just trying to paint a picture for you. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, well, I'm prophesying now. You better, you better really receive this word. You know what I'm trying to say? But what I'm trying to say is, he said, I knew every situation. So I don't care what you're going through right now. He's here with you. And he has a place for you to be. And the purpose of this course, the purpose for what I got to do in my life is to make sure 
that you are equipped with everything that you need to say, you know what, devil, you know what, demons, you know what, person, no matter what you bring against me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Do you have that type of fervor? Do you fast often? Do you pray often? Do you read often? Do you seek him often? Do you do what it takes now to ensure that you maximize here? Many people avoid here. Many people avoid personal development. When was the last time you developed you? Are you a greater version for of yourself than you was a year ago? If you're still the same person a year ago, you got to ask yourself certain questions. Because you got to ask yourself, God, where are you leading me? Or God, if are you even leading me at all? When was the last time you self-examined yourself? I have to always look at me. So you three parts. Now that's why I slowed down in my course part. Your three parts, your body, your soul, and your spirit. The difference between us and God, we are just alike, not equal, but similar. He said you, he created us in his, in his image and his likeness. God is three in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, working harmoniously together and turning express three ways through time. He's one. The difference between him and us is that he's been working together all through eternity, all through time, but sin crept in us and it separated our whole being. Therefore, our spirit, our soul, and our body are warring against each other, and that's why, the, that's why we have to be very careful. The reason why we're not winning the wars against us is because we haven't first won the war within. And you don't win the war against lust, the war against pride, until you first humble yourself to the only one that can fix it. And many people get so caught up, well, I'm physically fit, I'm in shape. I see people coming to the wild all the time. They're fit, they're in shape, they're exercise often, but I used to wonder, I always wonder, how are they emotionally? How are they spiritually? Or you may see a person, you go to your churches, you go to your synagogues, wherever you worship. Well, hopefully, gee, let me, let's, keep, let's keep going. But whoever you worship, well, no, worship God. Let me, let's, let's, let's clean this up. <laughs> you can be spiritually fit. You can know all the doctrines in the Bible. Man, you never met people. Man, I get on my nerves. I'm about to get on a soapbox for a minute. People who are so overly doctrinally sound, they post everything about doctrine, but they can't relate to the culture. God wants you to be balanced. He wants you to be culturally relevant and doctrinally sound. But what happens is you get so doctrinally sound that you can't relate. The only person you can relate to is a person in the seminary. Or you be too culturally relevant. The only person you know is pocketing them. And you can't even, you don't know no scriptures again, <laughs> have no foundation for yourself. We have to ask ourselves, do I have that unique balance? Say, God, you know what? I'm going to make sure I know your word for one. But also, God, I'm going to make sure I'm not too overly saved that I can't reach no one. And it's so sad the church has been so cliquish to the point to where all we're doing is reaching each other. There's nothing wrong with discipleship. There's nothing wrong with building a community, but the community wasn't just being built for just us. It was built for the world. That's why the Bible says the harvest is right, but the labors are few. Why are the labors are few? Because nobody even woke up and said, am I even a laborer? Am I even laboring? And my question to you, how fit are you spiritually, soulishly, and physically? How is your body? Are you in shape? Do you ensure that you, man, say, I, gotta, I had to take away honey buns this week, man, because I know I was going to preach to y'all. I ain't want to be, you know, one of them false preachers or whatnot. But how are you physically? How are you emotionally? Are you emotionally stable? How many soul ties? How many people are you soul tied to? How many people are you emotionally connected to? Who are those people? What about your spiritual life? Are you fit? Do you fast? Do you pray often? Do you do what it takes to ensure that you are in shape? Because if you're endeavoring to win this war that's in this life, you got to ask yourself, God, am I fit for you? Am I equipped enough? Am I able? But you cannot be able to progress in God until you know what he wants you to do now at this moment. Before you can be secure, you first have to be still. Why do you think God whispers? So that you could be close enough to him to hear him. Many of us are so far away from him, we don't even know his voice. See, God doesn't speak amongst voices. He speaks when your heart sat still and when you remove the voices. You got to get to a place where you build a regimen and say, God, I'm going to do whatever it takes to know you. Let's talk about these four C's. If someone can give me a paper towel, please, your boy's sweating. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. Let's talk about these four C's. I'm going to let you go because we got 16 weeks ahead of us, or some, some time ahead of us. Let's talk about the creator. Let's talk about creation. Let's talk about creativity. Let's talk about create. Those four C's, creator, creation, creativity, and create. 
it's important for you to know why you're here. And I know it's tough for you out here. Let me, let me touch your heart for a minute. Let me, let me connect with you. I know there's people in this room who's been going through a lot of tough situations right now. And you're wondering why God is quiet. Or you're wondering where is God. Or you're wondering, why am I even going through this tough time? That's why I love the scripture, Mama and Pops, if I can make it plain for you. I love the scripture that says, it was good that I was afflicted. That if I wasn't afflicted, I wouldn't know your statues. What happens when you go through? Thanks, bro. I got you. Appreciate you. Oh, thanks for the water. Let's give it up for Howard and Ishmael. Appreciate you. I used to ask God, man, God, why you put your boy through so much, man? I know y'all be talking to God like that, like, God, man, again? I'm going through this again? I'm going around this mountain again, and God said, I gave you directions this way, but you chose to go around there. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves, God, am I still circling around the same situation because of my free will, or am I allowing myself to be humbled to be led by you? See, each and every one of you have the ability to create. You are creators. God created in you the ability to create magnificent things. Why do you almost slip? You wonder why throughout history, they, why do you think abortion is high? Why do you think back in Herod's day, Jesus' day, did he start killing kids? Because the devil understands the importance of what, he, what God has deposited in you. I tell people, you don't want to die and go to see, and look God face to face and say, God, I tried. And God looks at you and says, you only got 20% done of what I placed in you. Do you know how that eats me alive? Your love for God should compel you to empty you. I played basketball. My coach used to say, leave it all out there on the court, Josh. And when I go to heaven, I want God to say, son, you left it all out there. I call it residual impact. Residual impact, that means that you keep impacting people while you're sleeping, even while you're dead. My mission in life, and what I'm going to coach you through in this course is how to position your life for residual impact. When I die, will I have accomplished everything that God has for me to do? Probably not. But will, should my objective to be to accomplish most of it? Yes. I want to be able to say, God, you know what? If I was to die today, I have 300 some videos on YouTube. I have two books already written. I have courses that I'm, well, I haven't released them yet, but if I was to die today, you have enough videos and books to watch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that I left something. There's people in this room right now who's still holding on, you're hoarding. You hold on to that song, you hold on to that book, you hold on to that business idea, you hold on to that God didn't create you for a career, he created you with a call. And many people are pursuing a career for money, trying to make more money to build a, a, a stronger family unit. But God said, I gave you a call. How many people close their ears to God's call? And we refuse to pray and ask God, what is it that you have for your servant to do? What is it that you have for me to do, God? I'm tired of going around the same mountain. I'm tired. God, I got to hear from you in this America. If you don't know his voice now in this America, what happens when the bombs drop? What's going to happen when you're in that food line? What's going to happen? Not food line, the grocery store. But when you're in those food lines, what's going to happen when, when life is tough? What's going to happen? Do you know them in good times? If you don't know them in good times, how will you know them when them sirens are going? And my heart is not for you to be caught up on making millions and making billions. I want you to get caught up on how can you lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither wrath nor must can destroy, where no thieves can steal. But you want to anchor your life here. The Bible says, what profits a man if they gain the whole world but lose their soul? What have you exchanged your soul for? What have you allowed your soul to be stripped from you to the point to where you've given your soul to that person, that guy, that girl, that situation? And God's saying, I've been wanting to speak to you for the last five years. I remember back in 2010 when I had no job, had no girl had none, just my mama. <laughs> but I would be up at six in the morning, walking that path in the morning. I'll come back into my room. Mom goes off to work, creating videos. In a span of four months, because I engulfed in myself, I almost had five books written. 
But I allowed myself to get so distracted that my creativity was shrunk, was shrunken, shrinking, shrunk, whatever the word is. But I tell you right now, do not allow pro uh, procrastination to steal your opportunities. Don't allow your inadequacies to steal you of your opportunities. Get to know your creator. It's important for you to know him personally. He has a specific assignment for you. He has a specific plan for you. He has a specific way for you to be. He doesn't want you to be an echo. He wants you to be your own voice. He wants you to be your own person. He has a unique plan for you. But if you don't know your creator, you won't know much about yourself. Look at you. Inside of you is something worse than cancer. So there's something inside that's worse than the most atrocious disease out there on the planet. It's called your sin nature. And if you don't know how to kill that flesh every day, that thing will steal and rob from you every single day. That's what, that's what killed this whole creation that he made. But when you know that even in the midst of my sins, he died for me. That even while I was yet a sinner, he died for me. Even while I was yet a sinner, he came and pursued me. No man searched for God. Nobody in this room chose God. God chose you. Jesus said if the only person, anyone who, well, I forgot the scripture. We'll get back to it. But what I'm trying to say is, is that you did not pursue God. God pursued you and said, I have to create in you a new heart and renew you a right spirit so that you can be right in position where you need to be, so that you can be synced back up into my will. And you're going to have to work hard spiritually. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of prayer. It's going to take a lot of fasting. It's going to take a lot of reading. It's going to take a lot of community to ensure that you stay synced, but it's worth it. And I tell people, if you don't know your creator, you won't know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you won't know that you have the ability to create. What is that thing inside you that's still dying? What is that gift inside of you that you haven't allowed to be brought out? What keeps me going is what he placed in me to do. And my heart is burdened for you to be able to say, God, you know what? I'm going to find out why I'm here. I'm going to find out my purpose. Because if you don't know your purpose, you begin to decay. I see people come in my wall all the time. They sit down. They're stressed out. They make 60, 80, some thousand dollars a year. But they're pursuing a career. Pursuing your call would not be easy. Let me ask you that question. Do you even know what your calling is? The worst question not to know, the worst question not to have an answer to, is why am I here? But God's not a God that's so far away that he's not willing to say, you know what, I'm going to lend the ear to you. Every time you pray a sincere prayer out of your heart, God hears. And tonight I want you to go home and say, you know what, God, let me know why I'm here. Remove the voices. Cut off the YouTube, cut off the Netflix, you know what I'm saying? Cut all of it off and say, God, I'm going to be still until I hear you. Yes, God, I'm going to go to my workplace, but while I drive to work, I'm not going to play no music. I'm just going to be still. On my lunch break, I'm going to eat my sandwich in about five minutes. For the next 25 minutes, I could be still. When I get home, I'm not going to just engulf myself in everything else. I'm going to be still. If you practice being still, you'll know how to in tune your ears to hear. And we're not hearing because we don't know how it is to be still. Can you even sit down in one place for 20 minutes? Don't do nothing. Just think about him. I tell people the best way to get yourself in sync with God is to be appreciative. Many people lose God by asking him for things ahead and versus being thankful for what's around them. When you look ahead, you get distracted from what's around you. Well, only if I had a girlfriend, only if I had a boyfriend, only if I had a wife, only if I had a job, only if I had a career, only if I had another husband, another wife, only if I had this. And God said, look around you, boy, look around you, girl, don't you see how blessed you are? I've been in Nigeria, I saw people walking with no shoes, and they had a cell phone, which was kind of tripping to me. <laughs> they had the flip phones, but they're they, they going to catch up, they're going to get the iPhone too. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is I know what it's like to see people that didn't have nothing. And we have so many blessings around us that all we have to do is say, God, I am thankful for what's around me. And when you begin to worship him with what's around you, you begin to hear him closely and dearly. Do you know why you're here? Do you know your assignment? In this course, I'm going to give you tools and resources. 
your first homework assignment for this week. I have some poster boards in the back. I have some on a board. I didn't bring my board. Howard, can someone give me a board, please? Appreciate you, bro. I was supposed to bring my board up here. But there's a board. I'm going to do a board because I, I like big boards, man. I like, this, I like big stuff on my wall so I can be able to see it. I want you to separate. I don't care if it's your refrigerator, your mic, wherever you put sticky notes, how creative you want to be. I want you to separate it by body, soul, and spirit. And I want you to set goals for yourself for each compartment. I want to work out two or three times more a week. I want to make sure I take sweets out of my diet. I want to make sure I take fast food out of my diet. When I started fasting in July, I haven't been to Jack in the Box in the last two months. And I love Jack in the Box. But when I removed it, all of a sudden I don't even have a taste for it no more. So you got to look at your body compartment and say, where am I weak in my physical body? Do I work out enough? Do I, do I eat the right things? Do I do what it takes? And I want you to set goals on that board. Every time you meet that goal, take that sticky note away or take whatever creative tool that you have away. In the soul department, I want you to focus on how are you emotionally? Who are the people you soul tied to? I'll do it like this. So on this board here, I want you to separate it into three compartments. I have 10 boards out there for you. You can be creative as you want to be, but in your body, I want you to write down goals in regards to what you want to do to ensure that your body's in shape. Your soul add category, I want you to focus on your mind and your emotions. What gets you emotionally unstable? <clears throat> what are those emotional triggers? I want you to practice, if you have a problem with unforgiveness, I want you to go to that person at least once this week and say, you know what, I love you. I want you to challenge yourself in those emotional areas in your life. I want you to look at yourself and say, where am I weak emotionally? I want, to, I want you to challenge yourself in that regard. I want you to say, I, I want you to say one nice thing. I mean, be creative. I want you to say one nice thing to that coworker that gets on your last nerve. You see what I'm saying? Kindness keeps a coal of fire on a person's head. What that means is when you be kind, even to a person who's unforgiving or rude to you, it helps renew their mind because they're looking at you like, why are you being so nice to me? Was it not God's goodness that drew you to repentance? I want you to go to the spirit side. I want you to set goals. And we're going to do this as a team, as a group. We're going to start with the book of Matthew this month. I want you to read the book of Matthew for this whole month. I want you to read it. Even if you finish it in a day, re keep rereading it. Get you a notebook. And I'm going to have this written up online so for all you guys who need that. I want you to get a notebook. And every time you see a, a, a verse that pertains to you, I want you to write it down. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. I want you to also to find one memory verse. I got a book out there that you can buy, or you can ask me to give you the free download to the scripture book. I want you to find a scripture to memorize this week. We're going to do this as a team. And five minutes before every message, five minutes before, before I speak, I'm, we're going to talk about the homework. So what I want you to do, I want you to take a picture of whatever diagram you have. I want you to take a picture, if you put it on Pinterest, I'm not on there, but, you know, put that, <laughs> put that why am I here there so I can see it. Put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram. Let's be creative. Let's grow together. Let's look at the scripture one more time before I let you go. So, ladies, I know some of y'all like to mess up y'all refrigerator with sticky notes. Do that. Put on your cabinets. You know, you can get a poster board. I have boards out there for you, sticky notes out there for you. Go to Walmart and tell them why you're here. <laughs> I'm just joking. Psalms 139, I'm going to let you go. What time is it? 832, okay. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. Isn't that beautiful that he knows you and he searched you? You know when I sit down, you know when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I made my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your head, hand shall lead me and there your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day. Isn't that powerful? It doesn't matter how dark your hour is. How dark your moment is, he can see everything. I don't care if that darkest sin in the far corner of your life. I don't care that fear that's in the left corner of your life. I don't care whatever it is. God says, I see it, but I don't see it to condemn you. I see it to fix it for you. Come unto me, all who you are laden and heavy laden, I will give you rest, he says. You don't want your life to be continuously restless. You want to be at a place where you're resting. And verse 13 and 14, I'm going to let you go. For you formed my inward parts. 
You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. I pray that as we start this course and we get a little bit more in depth into who you are as a person, who we are as a people, and what it is that you have for us to do specifically and generally. I pray, Lord, that we continue to grow together, Lord, that we look at our bodies and we get in shape and we post those pictures of why I'm here at the gym and, and I'm getting right, God. And we, we go to those people that have wronged us and we forgive them and we love on them, Father God. We, we remove those people that we emotionally tied to, God. We begin to do the things we need to do to, to mature and I thank you, Father God, that we'll go all the way back to where we need to be, to be linked up with your spirit, to be led by you. And to a place, Father God, that your word becomes, 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 a, a, becomes a delicacy, Lord, that your word begins to fill us our spirits, God, because we're so physically obese, so physically fat, so physically nurtured, but our spirit man is anorexic, God. We need to fill our spirit man. And I pray, God, as we work on this for the next 10 or so weeks, God, that these great people who are watching on Periscope, who's watching right now live, who's with me live, God, will begin to do, uh, do great things for you as we begin to understand more about purpose and why we're here. With that being said, as Heather begins to come up, Father God, if there's any questions they may have, I pray, Lord, you give me the wisdom and the words to speak to help them. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's give it up for our administrative person, Heather. She'll be giving you some assignments and get your questions down. She'll tell you all about that. See you on the queue. So glad y'all could all make it tonight. I'm just, I'm thrilled to get to have met all y'all coming in and.